So today we're going to be graphing parabolas. Now before we start, we need to know that the basic parabola has the equation y equals x squared. And that's what this graph is right here, the basic parabola y equals x squared. The equations we're going to be graphing though are in vertex form. Now, in vertex form, there's some things you really have to pay attention to, all right? It basically has the same format of y equals x squared, except there's three extra numbers in there, all right? The number added at the end is the vertical shift. So if it's adding k at the end of the equation, that means it's going to shift the parabola up k units. If it's subtracting k, it's going to shift it down k units. Similarly, the number being subtracted from x before it gets squared is the horizontal shift. So if it subtracts h from x before it's squared, it's going to shift it to the right h units. However, if it adds h to x before it's squared, then we're going to shift it to the left h units. And then the last thing to pay attention to is that number being multiplied times x squared. That's your vertical stretch. What it's going to do is stretch the parabola vertically. Now, if it's a number less than 1, like a fraction, something between 0 and 1, like a half, then it's going to smoosh it down. All right? So let's see a couple of examples of this so we can get the hang of it. All right? So we're going to start by graphing y equals x minus 5 squared plus 3. OK? And for guidance, I have put the graph of y equals x squared on here so we can compare as we do this. All right? Now notice, we've got minus 5 from x before it's squared. That's going to be our horizontal shift. So what that's telling me is we're going to shift this to the right 5 units. Also notice, at the end of this is a plus 3. That's our vertical shift. So we're going to move it up 3 units. So I'm going to take that vertex right here and shift it to the right 5 units, up 3 units, and there's my new vertex. OK, so it's gone from here to here. And now you can kind of see why this is called vertex form. Because just by looking at this equation, I know exactly where the vertex is going to go. All right. So when we're done, we're basically going to take this parabola and we're just going to shift it right here. OK? So let's do that now. So I'll just follow the pattern of the points. And really what you have to do is just do one side of the parabola because the other side is going to be perfectly symmetrical. I always think of the pattern. Up 1, up 3, and then up 5. It goes up by odd numbers. There we go. There's one side, and then the other side is going to be perfectly symmetrical. And then sketch in a smooth curve as best you can. There you go. There's your parabola. All right. Let's do another one. This time, we've got three things in here. We've got our horizontal shift. We're adding four, so that means it's going to move to the left four units. Okay. Also, it's subtracting five at the end. That means it's going to shift down five units. And then it also has a 2 being multiplied by all this. So it's actually going to stretch it times 2. All right? So let's go through this in steps. I like to do the stretch first because it's easier. Um, it's easier to do when it's at the basic state. All right? So when we stretch this, we're going to stretch it away from the x-axis. And the distance each point is from the x-axis is going to double. For example, uh, well, this point's too tall, but this point. See this point right here? See how it's four steps away from the x-axis? When we stretch it by two, now this point is going to stretch up to eight steps away from the x-axis. It's going to double, OK? This point right here is one step away from the x-axis, so it's going to double. Now it's two steps away from the x-axis. This, this point right here is on the x-axis, so it's zero steps away from the x-axis. So when we double it, it'll stay there, OK? And we'll do this side too. This one doubles. This one doubles. And the reason why I didn't plot these ones is because this is 9. It's going to be at 18. It's going to be way up there. So you can kind of see when we stretch it, it's going to look something like this. All right? But we're not done because all we did was the 2. 
Now that we kind of have the basic shape of the stretched parabola, now we can shift it, okay? So when we shift it, uh, four to the left and five down. Let's see, one, two, three, four to the left, five down, there's where my vertex is gonna go. It's gonna go from here, four left, five down, to here. And now, I'll just copy the pattern of this parabola that I made before, two and six. Three, six, there we go. And when I sketch it in, there is my new parabola. All right, so it's this one. And it really helps to do this in two steps because stretching it and moving it at the same time would be a lot to try to do all at once. All right, I've got two more examples. So let's scoot this up a little bit, here we go. All right, this one right here, this one has a scale factor of one half. That vertical stretch is a one half. So this one's gonna shrink down towards the x-axis. So let's do that. And then it's subtracting four at the end. It's gonna shift the whole parabola down four steps. All right, but let's do the stretch first. So we are going to cut the distance from the x-axis in half. So this one that's at nine, it's now gonna be at four and a half. So it's gonna go from here to here. This one, which is four steps above the x-axis, is now gonna be at two. This one's one step of, above the x-axis, so it's gonna be a half a step. And of course, this one's at zero away from the x-axis, so half a zero is still zero. And I'll just do the other side too. And again, it's symmetrical, so we can kinda of play off that. But this is our general shape of our parabola. It's not bad, but you can kind of tell we've taken the parabola and kind of smooshed it down a little bit. Okay, well, not a little bit, smooshed it down by a half. Okay, but now we can shift this whole thing. So we're gonna take this whole parabola and shift it down four units. One, two, three, four. So the vertex is gonna go from here to here. And now I could just copy the rest of these points and we'll have it. So it's a half, this one was two up, and this one is, what was it, four and a half, right? So, two, four and a half. There we go. All right, all right. So, last one. This one, notice we have a horizontal shift of three to the left, but now there's a negative in front of it, or like think of it as negative one. What a negative will do, it will, it'll take that whole parabola and flip it upside down, okay? So we are basically going to flip it upside down and then shift it to the left three steps. So let's do that. I'm gonna start by doing the flipping first. I mean, technically it doesn't matter which one you do, but I think uh, I'll do the flipping first because it's easiest because it's at its basic shape here. So to flip this thing upside down, uh, we're gonna use the x-axis as the line of reflection. So this one's on the x-axis, so it'll stay there. But this one, that's one step above the x-axis, it's gonna reflect one step below. These ones are four steps above the x-axis, so they're gonna reflect four steps below the x-axis. And this one's nine steps below the x-axis, and well, it's not gonna quite fit, but you can kinda tell it's gonna go down here. All right, so when we reflect this thing, there's the reflection one. So we've got that negative taken care of, all right? Now we just have to shift it to the left three steps. So let's do that. This is gonna go one, two, three, that's gonna be there. And then everything else is just gonna shift over three steps as well. Three steps, three steps. That's gonna be like here, that's gonna be here. And now we can see what our new parabola looks like. It's gonna be that one right there. I guess I should have identified which one is my final answer. But seeing how you've watched me do it, you know which one I'm talking about, all right? So basically, when we're graphing parabolas, just remember vertex form and these three key features of the equation, all right? If you know those three, then you can graph any parabola that's in this format. 
Alright, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I'll see you next time.